Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and today I am going to show you guys how I assembled the Crayon Box Honeycuts Wafer Dies without using a large die cut machine. This is an XL wafer die set so technically you need like a Gemini or the large Spellbinders Platinum machine for this to work. However, it is just slightly larger than the platform on like a standard machine like the Spellbinders Platinum 6 and I realized if I just aligned it just so you just tilt it the littlest bit it fits it cuts it works <laughs> so that's what I did and I'm doing it face up here because I found that was actually kind of the easiest so I could see where it was lined up so I just have my platform a cutting plate the die face up shimmied it a little bit so it was on an angle cardstock cutting plate ran it through and the base cuts perfectly so I'm kind of happy about that um, it made things a lot easier so I didn't have to haul out my big machine because anyone who watches my videos uh, my my desk is just covered all the time when I'm crafting I just I have no space <laughs> so when I have to use the big machine usually I kind of avoid it if I can and this was my way of avoiding pulling it out so after I had die cut the base for that there is this die cut that is kind of the card base that is crayon shaped. I think it's more meant for you just do like one layer and you would write on the back and then on the front you'll adhere the crayons. But I wanted to make it into a foldable card. So that's what I did. I just took white cardstock and scored it and then folded it in half. And then I'm lining this die up so that the left side of it is just over the score line so that it's not gonna cut through. So again, a little tiny bit of fiddling. I taped this into place with washi tape because I don't want this to shift at all as I run it through. And I run it through as is. So it's gonna cut through both sides creating this card. So I run this through and since the left side of it wasn't um, on any card stock, it's not gonna cut. It'll just cut right up the edge and then I've got that score line. So now I have this opening, you know, scored little card here. So then after I do that, it's kind of the, almost like the mass production method is I just do all my die cutting. So this die set is perfect for scraps. I pulled out all my scraps in mostly primary type colors. Um, Cause there is the die for the corners of the like crayon, like pouch, I guess you'd call it. It's not really a box, it's like a crown pouch. And then there are two dies to create your actual crayons. So there's one for the crayon and then there's another one that's for what would be like the wrapper around a crayon. I was thinking that I was like, this would be perfect for sentiments too, because it's just a perfect little rectangle. So I did all my die cutting and then I have my piles of pieces and a way to add some dimension is I decided to just take Copic markers and color the, just the tops of the crayon, like the part that's going to be exposed. So that when I add the second layer, you could either die cut it from a different color cardstock. I was thinking vellum would look really nice too, just to give it that, you know, slightly different shade of color so that, you know, you get that little extra bit of dimension. But a quick and easy way was to just do Copic markers. So I would just grab markers at random that were, you know, similar colors to whatever cardstock I was using. And then I would color half of the edge of the die cut with the color. And then the other half, I was just using the C00, like a really cool gray, which at first goes on very dark, but then it will dry and you won't even see that. And it just kind of blends it out, gives it a little extra something. And then as another little extra step, I am lining up all the pieces that will be the, you know, the little wrapper for the crayon. And I'm just using my little Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station and using the magnetic ruler just so I can do all of these at once so I didn't have to do each one separately you know line everything up line up my ruler I lined them all up at once use the magnets to hold them into place then I'm just using my t-square ruler any ruler is gonna work and I'm just taking a black marker and drawing black lines along what will be the top area of these wrappers to add that black line makes them look a little more you know authentic so went along, added a couple black lines, um, started to fill them in with this marker, but this marker is old. This is my Memento Tuxedo black marker that I have literally had for goodness, like close to a decade, I think. So this would have taken forever. So instead I just grabbed my black Copic marker that I rarely ever use. So that came in really handy. <laughs> so I just used my black Copic marker to fill this in. Another option would just be cut a strip of black cardstock. That would work too. I thought about that. 
just cut a little thin strip of black cardstock and adhere it and you're good to go. So either, either method would work really, really easily. So I just colored in those little um, in between the black lines that I had drawn on. And then I'm just going to adhere all of these to the actual like crayons. And then again, as I was doing this, I was like, these would make really cute little bookmarks. <laughs> you know, you could just stick them in individually instead of like actually attaching them to the card, just stick a bunch of them in the little um, pouch and you or you could put their names on it or you could do like a bunch of them in a variety of color like I, just ideas are rolling like my younger kids would have so much fun with these so i might have to like die cut a ton more and they could help assemble them and yeah use them as bookmarks or just use them you know to play with and all that kind of stuff so i adhered all of the you know wraps for each of the crowns and then these line up onto the die cut card base. So of course I did them in rainbow order, just starting at one end and working my way to the other. And I'm just adhering everything with um, some craft tacky glue. So I decided not to add like any sentiments or anything, but again, like you could personalize this and like die cut letters to spell a name, etc. But I decided to leave it as is. I do want to create a label though for the front of my crayon box. So I die cut some red cardstock with one of the double stitched polygons honeycut dies. And then um, I have a sentiment from the Brilliant Day stamp set that kind of coordinates with these crayons and whatnot. And I cut the sentiment. <laughs> I cut out the word color. You could, you know, mask it off and stamp. I just always find it easier to just cut it because, you know, if I want to use the sentiment like as it was intended, I can just, you know, butt them all up together as they originally were, stamp it and it's fine. So I removed that so I could stamp both parts of the sentiment on the top and bottom of this die cut polygon. And again, lined it up, used my anti-static powder tool, and then I'm gonna stamp the sentiment with some clear embossing ink, just kind of centering it again onto this. And then I'm going to heat emboss this with some detail white embossing powder, just so that it really pops on the red cardstock. So coat this with the red embossing powder and then I'm going to melt this with my heat tool. And I purposely stamped the sentiment like this so that there's space along the middle because in the crayon box honey cuts dies, there is a the die cut word for color. So I had die cut those from white cardstock and then to adhere them, this is another little fun use I found with the um, Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station lined up that polygon again, and then you use that magne magnetic ruler to line this up, get a straight line, and then if I start from the middle, work my way out, so the middle letter, of course, is L. So start at the middle, work my way out, I can get all these die cut letters adhered, straight, not uneven. I'm usually pretty good at eyeballing things, but I find as I get older, they look straight, and then I look at it later, or you know, you back up a little bit, and it's like, that is, no, mm -mm, no. <laughs> So I adhered all of those letters. So now it says you add color to my world. I love the sentiments with these, um, the set. It's just, just cheerful. So I've got that done. And now all I have to do is assemble my little like crayon box, AKA crayon pouch. All you gotta do is fold on the score lines. The die cuts and scores at the same time. So I just fold along the score lines. And for the two little um, tabs on the sides that will adhere together, I'm just gonna use score tape. You can use liquid adhesive if you want. I tend to avoid that when I'm hearing things like this because I don't want it like oozing out at all and then you like glue it, literally glue it shut and it's useless. So I just added one eighth inch score tape to this, peeled it off, and then you just gotta shut the one side and then the pouch is assembled. Easy peasy, so simple. And then I was like, oh, cutting this with different colors. Like it doesn't need to be a crayon pouch. You could just cut this from different colors, do just a regular type of a little note card to add into it. Like it's just the cutest little thing and this will fit in an A2 envelope. So stamped and heat embossed a sentiment on that red cardstock as well. Another sentiment from the Brilliant Day stamp set and there's a coordinating wafer die for that as well. So I die cut that and I adhered that to the inside of my little crayon card. And then, um, all I have to do now is assemble the outside to decorate my little crayon box. So I assembled the green pieces of cardstock that I die cut with the coordinating dies and the little strips, everything, you know, was cut in an angle, done for me. You don't have to like think at all. It just comes together. 
So I adhered those into place and then I adhered that sentiment that I'd heat embossed and die cut the letters for. Here that to my little pouch and then as a final little bit of embellishment I'm going to add some Nouveau Crystal Glaze to the die cut letters just to give it that extra like raised glossy shine. So I'd, I'm going to apply this. You barely even need to squeeze the bottle at all. This stuff is it's definitely thinner than glossy accents. It comes out really nicely. So apply this to all the letters. I'm going to let this dry overnight and then um, this little pouch and card is done really easy really fun like i said you could do this in different colors not use the crayon elements and just have this cute little pouch to put even little like flat treats you like little flat chocolates and different things jewelry would work really well you could stick them on a little card and stick them in here like so many ideas anyway anyway as always there will be a link below the video to the blog post. I will have a supply list with links to all the supplies I used. So you can check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate it. I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.